the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. What did he say? This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. We've talked a lot on our show about the economy. We've talked a lot on the program about how people are whining about gas prices. People are worried about their jobs, their security, their debts, losing their homes. Just a general feeling in the country that nothing is going right. And I wonder, as we talk about this, how many of you have applied these concerns to your reproductive status? How many of you have decided that Honestly, you got to be more careful from now on because you can't afford to make a mistake. I happen to believe that just like people were stupid and bought Hummers that later they couldn't afford to put gas in or other big SUVs they couldn't afford to feed, just like people were buying $4.50 cups of coffee at Starbucks, I believe a lot of people who are sloppy about their birth control probably were sloppy because they thought, well, you know, if the worst happens, I can afford it. If she gets knocked up, I can pay for it. You know, I can afford it. I can't believe people would feel that way today. I can't believe people would think today that there's nothing to worry about. I mean, honestly speaking, if you made a mistake and the condom slipped or leaked or broke, could you afford the consequences of that? Could you afford to pay for that? I say many of you could not. It is a good reason not, not to be knocking chicks up. It's a good time to provide you with the reminder we tell you all the time. Every time you ejaculate, you release millions of sperm. And every sperm is like a biological blank check with your name on it. Every time you let some of that stuff leak into another person, you are running the risk that that person will own you for the next two decades. Own you. Own your life. Own your stuff. Own your paycheck. With the economy the way it is, even if you were careless before, can you really afford to be so careless now? We talk to lots of guys out there go, well, you know, I'm 19, my girlfriend and I, we're pregnant, and all that other nonsense we get here. How many of you have thought about the economy now and have realized, you know what? This is stupid. What if I knocked her up? That's the worst thing that could possibly happen. I wonder how many of you have uh, done that. I wonder how many of you are going to restrict risky sex, sex without condoms, sex without birth control. I wonder how many of you now will take to heart what I've been telling you, that a woman who doesn't use birth control is not just sloppy, not just concerned about her health or concerned about being fat or concerned about being cranky or concerned about her skin. Women who don't use birth control want to have babies. Babies will cost you money. You can't afford. You can't afford 
in this economy to make a mistake. And with all the people complaining about gas prices, complaining about unemployment, complaining about uh, you know, the problem people are having paying their bills, the problem people are having with their credit card uh, uh, bills, or the problem people are having, they're worried about losing their homes. Have you given thought to when you are having sex? Have you given thought to the fact that making a mistake could cost you in an even bigger way than ever before? Have you thought about that? Isn't it a good idea, boys? Seriously. I don't care how much you think your girlfriend loves you. Isn't it a good idea to avoid having babies? Isn't it a good idea to do everything you can to wrap it up, lock it up, and protect yourself? Isn't it? You tell me. Tom like it. one 800 800 tom Tom Likas. Hi, Tom. I love you. As well you should, darling. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay, so what are we talking about? I don't know. I'll tell you what. Buy a radio. Call me back. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yeah! The Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you Dave? Doing? Yes? You busy? Can you hear me? Hello, if, if Tom? I, if I'm saying your name uh, and I'm responding to what you're talking about, chances are I can hear you. Well, I said Tom and you didn't respond. You said Dave. So I'm responding to you. You now wasted thirty seconds of your time. Okay. Well, what I'm what I'm calling to talk to you about is that I think you give having kids a bad rap. I, I mean, I understand that the economy's you know in the tank and everything else, but I, I really believe that not everyone out there has a kid or is going to have a kid and thinks it's just the end of the world. I'm going to go work at Jiffy Lube. I'm going to go serve. You know, I'm going to be Tom's slave. For a you lot know? of people, that's what it's going to be. Yeah, but, I mean, do you know anyone who has kids? Many people. Any of them with degrees? Some, them- but I uh, some, but I would say the more kids they have, the less likely it is they have a degree. Okay, so, I mean, I know a lot of people that have degrees. They have good money. They have kids. They take their kids out deep sea fishing. You know, they, they, they go out, they have a good time with their kids, and the kids enhance their life. They make it better. You know, it's not... And plus, like, a lot of people in this world, when they're faced with a hardship or a possible hardship coming up, they actually improve themselves. For example, me. I, I just had my second kid. And when, when I knew that second kid was coming, I said, you know what? Uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a year isn't enough. I need a hundred and forty. Went out and got a forty thousand dollar raise. So, I'm just telling you, you know, it's for for a lot of people out there, having a kid is not the end of the world. And actually, the pressure having that kid may make their life better. May be that. I know. I by the way, may is not a good enough uh, a word. Uh, uh, people's lives should not be involving maybe, coulda, shoulda, woulda, might. You're right. Might. You're right. Everything's. Everything in this world is definite. You're right. No, I didn't say everything's definite, but I'm saying if you don't have uh, a reasonable reason to believe that uh, you are going to be uh, in great financial condition after you have a child, you shouldn't be having one. Well, you know, not everything in this world is definite, and you, you know, you got. But there, but some things are definite. Like if you make twenty thousand dollars a year and you have a kid, uh, you're going to go into bankruptcy. That's definite. You're going to do it. Not necessarily. They're making, sure you are. They're making twenty thousand dollars a year. He has a kid. He's not going to go into bankruptcy, but he's going to go get a better job. He's going to finish his education. It's maybe not, or maybe not. Well, uh, you, I mean, what proof do you have that everybody who's going to have a kid is just going to go go? Why don't you head on down to the welfare office and take a look at all the proof? Well, if you want to go hang out at the welfare office and be miserable and think that the world is miserable, then you go ahead and do that. I'm well, I I live in Los Angeles and I know the reality of what's going on. Yeah, but I see plenty of fathers out there who love their kids. They're doing the best they can. It's not the end of the world. In fact, how but many people kids- have kids. They don't even want to have kids. They have kids because they're being pushed into it by their girlfriends or because their parents want to be grandparents. In many cases, it isn't what they themselves want to do. 
Well, you got to be able to manage your relationships in life, too, with women, with your kids, with your family, and everything else. And I don't think if it's not something you want to do, then don't do it. I but agree. a lot of people do it, even though it isn't what they want to do. Well, you know, people do make mistakes, and I know you're... Well, so I'm that. here to remind them, don't do this. Unless it's something that you're so passionate about, and it's so important to you, it's so necessary, and you are willing to be financially committed to the female you're having that baby with for the next two decades. If you're not prepared for all of that, don't do it. But, Tom, today a lot of women are making just as much money as men. It doesn't and matter. That doesn't mean you escape child support and responsibility. You shouldn't escape child support. If you have a kid, support the kid. Now, my point no. is, don't, you want to avoid child support, don't have kids. Yeah, but if you do have a kid, pay your share. And I've never said to people they shouldn't pay their child support. There's one sure way to avoid paying child support. Don't have children. Okay, there's one sure way to ensure that you never, ever feel the love of a child, and that's to not have children. That's not too. true. I feel the love of a child, my nephew. I have my Not nephew, girl. Ryan. He's seven years old. He loves me dearly. We have fantastic times together. We we see each other in person. We talk on the phone. We go to ball games together. We went to Wrigley Field together last summer. We have a great time. I do okay. feel the love of a child. I don't have to have, to have the ownership uh, contract in order to feel the love of a child. Okay, well, I drive a Toyota Camry. Can I come over and borrow your Lexus someday? Just the reason so you drive a Toyota understand. Camry is because you have kids. The reason I drive a Lexus is because I don't. Okay, so can I come over and borrow your Lexus no. someday so I can feel what it's like? Because I'm no. I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not going to commit myself to enjoying a Lexus and making. You have that committed payment. to a life. Uh, by the way, Toyota is one of the greatest products in the world. But you are now committed to a lifetime of Toyota. Okay, so you own stock in Toyota, so keep keep selling it. But. I own stock in just about everything, believe me. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Heather on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Okay, so I have a lot to say. Dave is actually a total idiot because having children is the most ridiculous thing right now, especially because our economy is crap and because... Having children is very, 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 very expensive. And people under the age of 25 are having children just busting them out and thinking it's no big deal. And guys, actually, my brother likes to have sex, you know, without condoms, thinks it's not a big deal. And I always tell him these girls are going to trap him because he makes a good living. And he thinks it's not a big deal, you know, oh, I don't like to use condoms. And I just think it's crazy. And I think it's ridiculous. And, I mean... What do you think? How, how, you know what I think. Of course it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, don't you think it's like I can't even breathe when I hear these people talk when he says, oh, you make $20,000 a year and blah, 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 welfare. I'm like, like, are you joking me? Like, you can't even, like, breathe. And we're paying all – everyone's paying those people. All these kids that – these people have, like, six kids and they're just walking around. We're paying all their, their freaking food, everything. I just can't breathe about it. I think it's ridiculous. If you don't make over $150,000 a year, if you're not in a stable relationship, if you're not over the age of 28, 29, you should not have children. You're psycho. You're crazy. And my brother is having sex with someone. Oh, just a random chick. And he doesn't use condoms because he doesn't like to use condoms. Oh, too bad, too sad. And just like I say, listen to Tom Likas. And I said, I said, turn on the radio about an hour ago when you were talking about this. And I said, listen to him right now. You're going to get stuck with this huge bill. You're going to have a baby. This bitch is going to, oh, sorry, excuse my language. This girl is going to say she's pregnant and you're going to be screwed. And he just doesn't, like, realize. He thinks it's like he kind of realizes, but he really doesn't. Outrageous. Well, you know where I stand on that. By the way, a word to the poor out there, and I don't care what color you are or where you're from, uh, simply this. Uh, if you make less than $35,000 a year, you have no business having children. You just have no business having children. This has nothing to do with... Um, uh, uh, genocide has nothing to do with uh, hatred of the poor. I grew up dirt poor, okay? It has to do with the fact that a child, I believe, has a right to grow up with a certain minimum living standard. A certain minimum living standard. If you make less than $35,000 a year, you can't afford to have a child, period. You shouldn't even be thinking about it, much less doing it. 
You should be making your plan right now to prevent unwanted births. Any child you can't afford, any child you can't support to the point where they can eat properly, live in good shelter, go to a good school, you have no right to be having children, and you shouldn't be having them. Let me make this simple. Don't have kids if you're poor, period. Aaron in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, hey. First, I wanted to say uh, everything you're saying about uh, having kids is is totally true. I've been a loser my whole life, and uh, thanks to you, I'm finally pulling my head out of my ass. But uh, the biggest thing is get a degree first, get the job then think about kids. Because here I am trying to get a degree now, and it's a pain in the ass with screaming kids running through the house trying to get your degree. It's just, it's horrible. Wow. So I just wanted to give a shout-out shout out to you. You're actually the reason I started going back to school. Because um, I, was, I was raised by a loser, so that in turn, you know, usually a loser will produce another loser. So I don't, I don't want my son and daughter, even though I was a loser, I don't want them to grow up to be losers yeah. like I was. So keep up the good work, Tom. Could you blow me up? I certainly can. one 800 tom That's our telephone number. John is listening to our online stream in San Diego on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Father. How are you doing today? Great. Cool, cool. Just want to uh, give my, my two cents here. Um, me and my girlfriend actually had a situation where, as a matter of fact, we, uh, you know, she was pregnant, and we just knew automatically that, you know what, we our careers weren't established yet, that, you know, we just had to have an abortion. And anyone who thinks that, that because, oh, we're pregnant, let's have the kid, even though they, like you said, they're not financially ready to. Anyone who decided to have a kid is just plain stupid. You know, I was a middle kid, uh, middle of three boys, and I was raised by a single mom, and we were on welfare for a while, and I know what it's like. And, you know, if you can't provide for your kids and you can't give them the resources they need, then you shouldn't be having kids, period. I, th- I think it's just plain stupid. But people keep doing it. I know, that's what's insane. It's what they need to do is they need to go back to school, you know, get like the person Aaron was saying before, get get your degree, and then if you decide to want to have kids, which I'm totally against, if you even decide to want to do it, then, then go ahead and do it. But don't do it now if you're not even financially ready. It's just plain stupid. You're just setting yourself up for failure, and you're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do in your life because you're going to be indebted to the kids. I, I totally agree with you, John, and I thank you. Uh, Vincent on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing today? Great. I just want to tell you about my experience. My wife and I uh, met in grad school. We decided not to have children. We both earned doctorates like 10, 12 years down the road. We're in highly paid administrative jobs in our in our field. We live at the beach, not not in a beach town, but at the beach, drive nice cars. We're in a field that allows us seven weeks vacation a year. We're going to England and France next week. Just came back from New York. I mean, life couldn't be better, and it was because we had a plan, we followed it, and we didn't have kids. Good for you. I mean, I've got all my contemporaries have have you know have two or three kids, kids in college. Their life their lives are basically you know crap for the next ten twelve years because you say two decades, it's actually longer than that. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to throw a number on it that people can understand. There's some people it's less, and some people it's more. Well, yeah, exactly. And, you know, another thing I'll say is I also have the best-looking wife of any of my contemporaries, too. She's a size, she's a size two. She takes care of herself because she has the time to do it. No she's FUPA? She's not running around after rug rats. No FUPA? No FUPA. Mm-hmm. No uh, really, stretch marks? No stretch marks. So, you know, these guys need to listen to you. And it's the, probably the most important decision you'll ever make to have kids. You can't do it out of your back pocket. And if you're going to do it, which I don't know why you would, but if you are, you better wait till you're financially able to do so, or your life's going to be hell. You are right about that, Vincent. Here's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. John. <laughs> What's up, man? Not much. What are you doing? <laughs> A radio show. Nice. That's that's 
nice, man. Uh, so here's my here's my story. Uh, 28 years old. Uh, I've been with uh, a beautiful girl for 10 years uh, since I was 18. And um, through those years, I was we were living a pretty high life. Uh, we were making over six figures a year together. Um, and then uh, we came through some hard times. I invested some money into my company, uh, and around that time I started uh, smoking a little bit too much of the chronic, um, and then things kind of fell apart. And just around that time, uh, the next thing I know, I'm having a baby. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh boy, and what did right. you do to prevent that, by the way? What did I do to prevent it? Well, nothing. No, nothing. Because we had talked, and she wanted a baby very bad. And, you know, uh, I always knew I wanted to have a kid relatively young. But when this, all, when this all happened, man, I went through a nervous breakdown. You know, I, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I just, you know, I just... Uh, well, let's just say life was not easy, you know, and I had traveled on the way. I had, you know, very little money in the bank. And then all of a sudden I'm realizing, <laughs> okay, my whole life is flipped upside down now. What am I supposed to do now? So now my boy is, uh, now my boy is one, and I love him to death. There's nothing more beautiful, I tell you. I mean, I never thought this, but when you come home and you sleep in and, uh, you see a smile on his face, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, it really is. But now I'm stuck in the hole, <laughs> you know, and it's hard to climb out. It's hard to climb out and try to get back uh, to the level that I was financially, you know. So what would you say to the guys who are thinking of doing something stupid like you did? Well, what was stupid? Having a kid? Having a kid when you couldn't afford it. <laughs> the thing is, we could afford it. We could afford it until, uh, uh, until kind of things went wrong. But but by then couldn't it, you? By, the, by then it was too late. If you were living that close to the edge, you couldn't afford it. What do you mean we were living that close to the edge? When you when you say things started to go wrong, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What am I talking about? <laughs> I'm saying we had, we had a lot of we had a lot of savings, had a lot of money in the account. Okay, but how and can things go wrong? I don't understand. You don't understand how things can go wrong. No. I invested I invested money into my business. Okay, a good maybe eighty percent of it. Of well, that, they, they, that that money is not available for having children or anything else. Well, sure. Well, sure. You you had a child because you assumed, like like the eighty percent of business owners that fail with their small businesses, you assumed your business was going to be a success. Right. Wrongly. Well, wrong. Pay no attention to the fact that eighty percent of all new businesses fail. Yeah. So you did not have the money to do this. You could have waited until you saw whether or not your business succeeded, but not you. Well, my my the reason I had that money in my account because my business was doing very well, and then uh, well, I got sick, man. I started, I just got off the wrong path, you know. Started doing the bad things. The you mean like smoking chronic, like smoking chronic, and then the next thing I but that's know, something uh, you had control over. I did. I, yeah, I had control over, but I lost control. You know. Well, so, so in reality, yeah. you were you could not afford to have a child, and you were certainly not ready. If you're busy smoking chronic and starting new businesses, that's not the time to be having children. Well, you know, I'm an artist, creativity. You know, blah kind of blah something. blah. What an excuse. <laughs> uh, 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 I can't take this anymore. Holy cow. 
One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Natalie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, are you there, Natalie? Let me uh, push the right button. I That'll am. help. Hello, <laughs> Tom. Can you hear me? Yeah, well, I can now that I press the right button. Oh, great. Listen, Tom, I'd like to throw in my two cents. First of all, there are many, just there are positive and negative aspects of having children. The positive ones are, you should be, you should have children, Tom, as long as you want to, you're ready, you're financially stable, you're mentally stable, you're physically stable. Everything has to be going right, in the right direction. There are no, oh, I'm in college, I'm in high school, my bank account's not stable, I'm overdrawn, this, that. There can't be excuses like that. You know, I just believe that having children is a beautiful thing. But say, for instance, I'm 21. I have a friend um, who shall remain anonymous. She has two children. She's a year younger than me. I've known her since I was 13 years old in middle school. She already has two kids, and she's living in a shelter somewhere in Texas. She doesn't even have, uh, she doesn't even have money to call me on a pay phone. I think she has about 50 cents in her pocket right now. You know what I mean? So having a child can sometimes be the worst thing you can ever do to yourself or the most beautiful that's just my opinion, you know? What do you think? Well, uh, uh, first of all, my primary concern is the child. And unfortunately, most people who have children, their primary concern is their own ego. Right. They have you... children because of their own egos. Ooh, the way we look. Can you imagine what a beautiful baby we would have? You would have your eyes. <laughs> uh. Or... You know what? You're so smart. I'm so smart. Can you imagine the kid we would have? Ah. Or, you know, uh, I don't, I'm the last son of the family and I don't want the family name to die. I mean, uh, well, imagine if there were no more Smiths coming along. <laughs> and other stupid, egotistical reasons why people have children. Right. And then what, what, what's really antagonizing on top of that, not only is it all about ego, then they start telling you they're doing the world a favor by having children. Right. Which they're not. For me, it's all about stupidity. If you're stupid enough to think that if you trap a guy by getting pregnant and that'll somehow save your, your marriage or your relationship or your life, you're, that's pure, unlogical thinking. Or if you think to yourself, like my friend, for example, she was pregnant when she was 15 years old, and I told her, I begged her, have an abortion, have an abortion, please. You'll, be, you'll thank me later on in life. She told me, oh, I'm Catholic. I can't have an abortion. I told her, well, why can't you use condoms? And then she's like, well, I guess I didn't think about it at the time. I was drunk, but I'm definitely Catholic, so I'm definitely not having an abortion, which to me is, is another form of pure illogical thinking. So, God, you know, who knows where she is now? Uh, well, it was a pleasure talking to you, Tom. And if you take me out, can you take me out bong style? I certainly can, Natalie. <coughs> tap, tap, tap. Like this. Like this. 1 800 5800 Tom. What do you have against women? Nothing. My manhood, future. It's the Tom Likes Show. Jay on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, it's good to hear you. You ought to be going for president. We love your show. Thank you, Jay. I got it. My question to you is twofold. First, I'm a 40-year-old man. Financially, Tom, I'm fine. I've done well for many years. i saved money. I have two kids. One's 18, 19. They both are in college. I feel like I've been there, done that. I remarried. I've been married now for seven years. Beautiful wife. My fear is the following. She wants kids bad now because uh, she's 27 years old. She feels her biological clock is ticking. In my heart, I feel like I've done, been there, done that. Tom, I've been through the highs and lows of life. She's actually hearing this program right now, so maybe you can give us both a good advice. My biggest fear is that. 
even if I'm doing well today, I do very well and make over 400000 a year, and I've been doing that for quite some years. I save about 20 to 30% of my income. My fear is not just the income part, like my ex-wife. The moment they get pregnant, the moment they have a baby, they feel they have a license to get fat, then they get mad at you because you don't touch them anymore. And that's, I need you to talk to us both. What's the right thing to do under our circumstance? Well, I mean, uh, if you can't compromise on this. You can't have half a child, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't, personally, I want to make her happy. She's a great wife. Tom, I do have a great marriage. I'm pro-marriage the second time, not the first. I just don't want to lose what I have. I like the size twos. I can accept the size three. I don't want a size seven or 12 or 19 or whatever sizes they come in. And I don't want to go to the responsibility. Everything is perfect in our lives for seven years. We have sex all the time in all the wrong places. Life is great. Why ruin a good thing? And I don't know how to break her heart. For the first time in my life, I'm actually wearing condoms because I don't believe, I don't trust her that she's on birth control. Well, um, I understand that, and chances are she does have an agenda, and chances are you're going to be cold-cocked with a surprise. Why don't you use a condom? No, that's what I'm using it to cover myself right now because, you know, they tell how you... How does she I'll react? Here's a, here's a clue. Here's a way to get a clue. How would she react to that? How, do, how do, What does she say when she sees you using a condom? She's complaining. I mean, I've never really been a condom user to the last seven months, and really, I'm not happy with it. She complains that it doesn't feel the same for her as well. Okay, that's her complaint. And I know what she wants. She wants a baby. And I understand that every woman wants a baby. Really, I don't have the excuses of money. I have a career. Uh, I've done well, but it's not about money. I don't care about that part, Tom. I, you and I are maybe in disagreements towards the money part of life. It's, it's basically the responsibility. How do you tell a woman, I can't give you a child because, because it's just too much responsibility? Why don't you tell the truth? So what, you divorce? You ruin a good thing because you're well, depriving a you woman and you want, you want her to stay skinny? One of, you know, my four, one of my four divorces was because of that. Okay, then you. Her name is her. Her name is Crystal. Tell her right now on the phone. Will you? Are your best advice to us is David cannot have sex with fat women. I'm sorry, I can't. I've tried. It's not a button. It's not a button that I can push, and all of a sudden everything works. They got to be hot. I'm a sexy forty year old. I take care of myself. I work out every day. I eat clean, and I expect the same out of her. What do you tell us? She and, and, and you don't want the responsibility of raising a child. You said so. I don't want the responsibility anymore. Exactly. So we, do we divorce because of this? Ruin a good thing? Uh, you do what you have to do. I mean, uh, there, again, there, there, there really is no in-between on these things. Uh, Tom, I wanted you to have the perfect answer. I don't well, have the, but the point is, is, how do you cop it? All right, have half a baby. Say again? Have half a baby and put it on her side of the house. I mean, there is no compromise on this. You're in or you're out. Okay. I uh, I still don't have the solution. It's a million-dollar question. So if you're me, you just continue to wear a condom till the day she says, I want a divorce because you won't give me a baby. But that, that, that could very well happen. And by the way, don't leave those condoms where she can uh, get her hands on them. What? How, what's that going to do if she does get a hand on? Stick As a woman pinhole. Women get pregnant with a used condom. I didn't. Women know are sticking pinholes right through the wrapper. You got to be kidding me! Boy, I I'm kid gonna... you not. <laughs> I kid you not. And in fact, uh, women's magazines have written about it, and your wife probably read about it. I'm telling you. Okay, well, Tom, I love your show. Really, I, I agree with 70% of everything you say, and the 70% have a lot of weight. I love your show. Thank you. Stay on the air forever, at least until I'm dead. And uh, uh, thank you very much for taking my call. Thank you. Appreciate the call. What do you do? You can't compromise on that. You do it or you don't. Letty on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Let me try this again. Letty, yes. Um, I'm calling because of all the morons and idiots that keep calling in thinking they can have children at a young age. And I'm telling you this because I'm 29 years old. I have four children, and I've been 
married once, I'm now divorced, and I have an ex-boyfriend, and I'm now single. So, um, for all the people... And you have how many kids now? I have four. Four kids, two yes. different fathers, and you're 29, and now you're unmarried. Right. No right. boyfriend, and what man wants you now? Exactly. Exactly. And I wish I would have turned on to your show many, many years ago. I'm an idiot for not doing so. And maybe now, you know, I would barely be thinking about having children, if that. Because let me tell you something, ladies. If you're thinking about having a child and you're 19, 20, even 25, don't do it. Have your fun. Get an education, first of all. And you wouldn't be like the way I am now, struggling. And I only make, Tom, maybe like 25000 a year. So you can imagine my life. Oh, I can imagine your life at the welfare office. Well, actually, I'm not. I mean, actually, I'm fortunate enough that uh, their dads do pay child support. So, you know, but even that doesn't really do much, you know. So, I mean, just the way I could say right now is just have your fun and get an education, have your fun, and then think about having children and be married. Ladies, be married, please. I listen to all the little girls that call in, oh, I'm going to do fine, you know, uh, 19, pregnant, you know, the dads are nowhere to be. You know, they're not. it's not going to get you anywhere. All it's going to leave you is with a child and a man who doesn't want to help you raise that child because it's not theirs. That's right. So I, I know, I know, I know. I want no part of that. <laughs> Come on, Tom. <laughs> no. Well, I just want to say I love your show and I listen to you all the time. And um, I love you. Thanks. And um, could you take me out uh, Lacey Peterson style? That would be tasteless, Letty. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, oh my goodness, Ed on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Ed. Tom, good to talk to you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, listen, uh, first of all, I just want to say, I've been living in L.A. for a year. Started to listen to you a couple months ago when one of my best friends here recommended you to me. And... Uh, I'm not going to talk about myself much, but I did get out of a bad relationship, and looking back and listening to you put a lot of it in perspective and made me realize that it's probably the best thing I could have done. Are you getting more ass than a toilet seat now, Ed? Hey, I'm young, I'm single, I'm working in the medical field, and I'm in L.A., so what do you think? Of course you are. Of course. But listen, so what I want to tell you is that from my workplace perspective, I do a lot of work in the, in the hospital and out, but I'm in the labor and delivery uh area a lot so you see a lot of you see a lot of pregnant women waiting to deliver and uh used to work in a hospital that was in kind of a more lower class area so you got a lot of the people who are on welfare on medicare whatnot and it just blows my it blew my mind how many women i saw who were not even 20 on their first second or third kid unmarried and uh you know and i see the whole family comes crowding in so i see their mothers who are probably no older than their 30s or 40s and who the hell knows if there's a father figure anywhere in that family. And it's just amazing. I'm like, how do these people just keep on pumping out babies? And how do these, who knows, one parent, two parents, how are they okay with it? And I'm just. By the way, how are these ladies at paying their uh, bills to you? Oh, because uh, you and I are paying for them. That's, there they, we they go. don't have. They don't have a job. They don't have the money. They don't have the private insurance. They're, you know, they're getting taken care of by us. Wow. And, uh, you know, these women have just learned how to work the, uh, learn how to work the social services system and the welfare system. And, uh, I can tell you, I can talk to you about this. I never say this in polite company out in the open, but hey, I'm not, I'm not one who's about violating civil, you know, civil human rights or anything, but sometimes you look at situations like that. And some, and sometimes you think that China like measures of mandatory sterilization. Oh, and we're out of time, but I thank you for the call. The Tom Likas Show.